everybody and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kitty Mary and today's impact video it's a big one. I, I don't know what else to tell you. It's gonna be a big one. We're gonna talk about the impact of crude oil, petroleum, fossil fuels, etc. And I don't necessarily expect a lot of people to be super surprised by any of these facts that we're about to talk about. However, I have been asked to talk about it because even though it is blatantly obvious that of course that is the big problem, like 71% of all global emissions are caused by 100 companies, specifically crude oil, petroleum companies. So like it's been in circulation for a while that this is a fact, this is something that we know. But if you want to get a larger overview of what the issues are, what we can do, etc., this is the video for you. Let's get to it. Before we can talk about the impact of fossil fuels, I think it could be pretty interesting to talk about what that even means. So millions of years ago, plants and algae, small organisms, were living in shallow waters. And once they died, their bodies and like their organic material would sink to the bottom of those waters where they would eventually be covered in tons of matter, sediment, etc. And during millions of years, they would continuously be covered with more and more things, which would mean the temperature rose and the pressure rose. And this combination of lots of pressure, lots of temperature and millions of years eventually created crude oil. Essentially, it's ancient carbon-based life forms. Crude oil is essentially hydrocarbons, which is 13% hydrogen and 85-ish percent carbon. And then there's tons of other things like there's sulfur and nitrogen, oxygen and some metals as well. And the different ratio between these elements can alter the oil and what we can use it for, etc. Now fossil fuels include coal, natural gas, oil, petroleum, etc. They are all formed under similar conditions, high temperature, high pressure, millions of years. Today oil can be found in reservoirs or reserves underneath the ground where those shallow waters once were. And the reason why they end up in these reservoirs is because of pressure. So they will gather in these small pockets in the ground and that's where we initially drill them up. In the past only oil was extracted from the ground while the natural gas was usually wasted. However, later we have found technology to either re-inject the natural gas back into the well or we can make it into a liquid gas that we can then transport more easily and also use for stuff. Petroleum is used for a bunch of things today and petroleum, fun fact, actually means rock oil in Latin. And we use it for fuel, we use it for plastic, we use it for synthetic materials, we use it for anesthetics, we use it for the feedstock to make different types of chemicals and synthetic materials, we use it for asphalt, we use it for road oil, We you get the point. We use it in so many different aspects of our lives today. But the most common use for petroleum and fossil fuels in general today is power and energy. When we burn fossil fuels, that creates energy. For instance, in an engine where combustion takes place, the heat that is applied to the fossil fuels makes the molecules, the hydrogen and the carbon, react with each other, and that's what creates energy. Burning coal works in a similar way that interacts with a generator that then creates power. The leading countries in petroleum production today is the US, Saudi Arabia, Russia, China and Canada. While the largest proven oil reserves can be found in Saudi Arabia, Venezuela, Canada, Iran and Iraq. Fossil fuels are a non-renewable resource, which means that we only have a finite amount of it. And that's because it took millions of years to be created in the first place and we don't exactly have millions and millions of years in our supply chains today. Thus, it's a non-renewable resource. And while renewable resources like hydro or wind are becoming more and more widespread, which is great, there is still a huge reliance on fossil fuels today. On a global average, it is about 84% of the world that still relies on fossil fuels for power and energy generation. Of course, this differs a lot from country to country in reality, but that is simply the global average. Now, just for a tiny bit of history, because I think it's important and also incredibly interesting, we have actually been using 
oil for a really, really long time, hundreds of years in fact. While the oil industry we now know today is relatively new, we have been using fossil fuels or we have been using oil specifically for a really long time. The earliest dated uses of oil was in year 350 in China and indigenous people in North America have actually also been using a rock type oil mixed with tar sands etc to make adhesives for canoes and baskets. But the oil industry that we know today was formed around 1850. The first modern oil well was documented in Poland in 1853. The Industrial Revolution created tons of options for the innovation of petroleum. During this time, steam engines generally became too slow and too ineffective to meet demand for new innovation, new production. Also, the invention of the mass-produced automobile during the early 20th century also definitely spiked an interest in fossil fuels. And in very, very few decades, the production of oil skyrocketed. In 1859, the US produced 2,000 barrels of oil per year, but by 1906, it was 126 million barrels per year. Today, the US produces about 6.8 million barrels of oil per day. And more than 70 million barrels of oil are produced every single day worldwide. That's almost 50,000 barrels of oil. A minute. Yeah. And fun fact, the US is the country in the world that consumes the most oil out of anyone. In 2011, the US consumed more than 19 million barrels of oil every single day. That's more than all the oil consumed in Latin America, Eastern Europe and Eurasia combined. But exactly how do you get the oil out of the ground? I think I mentioned drilling in passing a couple of minutes ago, so let's talk about that. When extracting oil from these underground reservoirs, you drill a hole into the reservoir and that changes the pressure, so it goes from high pressure to low pressure and that makes the oil go towards the lowest pressure in a similar way as to how the oil came into the reservoir in the first place. And drilling can either be developmental, explorative and directional. If drilling is developmental, it means that you already know that oil has been found in this place, so you keep drilling for more oil there. If drilling is explorative, oil hasn't been found in this particular spot and you're the first one to give it a go. Explorative drilling is also sometimes referred to as wildcat drilling. And if drilling is directional, it means that you dig a hole down, down into the ground and then you go to like either side. And that type of drilling is actually what caused the first Gulf War in 1991. And is there any environmental consequences to drilling? Well, I'm so happy that you asked. There is absolutely, yeah. Lots. The environmental consequences of drilling include the burning of fossil fuels to keep the machines, drills, wells, etc. running. But moreover, when oil is extracted from the ground, huge areas of natural land is being stripped completely down to make room for this industry. And that means terrible loss of biodiversity and ecosystems, natural habitat that we, that we need. Yeah. Then there is fracking or hydraulic fracturing. You inject that into the ground and the rock in which the oil and gas is stored fractures, thus the name. And there are definitely risks to this practice as well. For instance, fracking operations run the risk of running into groundwater supplies and contaminating those with the fracking fluids, which is not great for human health, definitely toxic. Then there is massive water consumption related to the fracking liquid. Then there is again, loss of biodiversity and earth tremors because the high pressure will make the earth vibrate. The oil industry takes a big toll on landscapes and ecosystems with the unearthing, the processing and the moving of materials to extract oil and gas. The consequences fall on biodiversity as well as indigenous lands. The fossil fuel industry strips down huge stretches of land, including forests and mountaintops, to make room for wells and pipelines all across the globe. And even after drilling in a particular spot, those areas are never gonna recover. Coal and oil extraction also threaten our waterways and groundwater. Coal mining, for instance, wash acid runoffs into rivers and lakes and large amounts of toxic waste and unwanted rock and soil is dumped in streams. But wait, there's more. Oil platforms that are used to extract oil from reservoirs that are located under the sea pose huge environmental risks. When oil leak into the ocean, it's often because damage has been done to the platform or the well or the pipeline, which makes the oil explode 
out of the well. And these platforms take a long time to fix. It's a very slow process, usually because the majority of the repairs will have to be done hundreds of feet below the sea. And when oil spills out into the oceans, thousands of animals are harmed all throughout the food chain through continuous contamination and bioaccumulation. In 2010, we saw the biggest oil spill in history. It was in the Gulf of Mexico that the Deepwater Horizon was severely damaged, and this episode killed 11 platform workers, and it spilled over 4 million barrels of oil. This threatened large natural areas, thousands of animals died, and it also caused a lot of damage to local economies because of the tourism and the fishing industry that severely declined. It took three months to stop the leak, and the restoration is still ongoing 12 years later. If we look at the number of oil spills through the last few decades, we can actually see that the number is declining. However, thousands of oil spills are still taking place all over the world, according to the NOAA. And even small spills can still cause massive damage for up to 10 years in the surrounding area. Even though spills have significantly decreased since the 70s, about 100,000 metric tons of oil is still spilled globally as of 2021. So we're doing better, we're just not doing great. Now, burning fossil fuels to create energy releases carbon dioxide, aka CO2. Let's talk a little bit about that. It's a result of the hydrocarbons reaction that create the greenhouse gas. And the reason why it's called a greenhouse gas is because it creates a layer in the atmosphere that makes the heat from the sun go towards the earth, but then cannot escape back into space. So the earth gets hotter like a greenhouse. Carbon dioxide is the most prevalent greenhouse gas there is, but some of the other ones we have talked about in other videos as well, like methane from the animal agriculture video. Then there's also nitrous oxide and fluorinated gases. But let's stick a little bit with CO2, because CO2 is the primary greenhouse gas that's emitted through human activities. In 2020, carbon dioxide accounted for about 76% of all emitted greenhouse gases. And while carbon dioxide is a natural part of the planet's cycle, it's a natural part of nature, it's a part of photosynthesis, all the damage that it's doing right now is 100% human-related activities. Just FYI. <laughs> I don't even know if I need to specify that specifically on this channel. But now, now, but now we're all on the same page, okay. Moreover, and I think I mentioned this in the beginning of the video, but a report from 2017 shows that about 70% of all emitted greenhouse gases from 1988 until 2017 were emitted by the same 100 companies. Most of them fossil fuels. The vast, vast majority fossil fuels. Also, emissions from fossil fuels aren't only hurting the planet, they're also described as an invisible killer. It can lead to respiratory, cardiovascular and other diseases and is responsible for more than 13% of deaths in people aged 14 or older in the United States. Fossil fuel development can also leak toxic substances into soil and drinking water sources, causing cancer, birth defects and liver damage. And according to the NRDC, fossil fuel emissions are responsible for one in five deaths of people worldwide. Wide. So, what can we do? You know, I want to end this video on a this is what we can go out and do empowerment type note. I think that is the most productive instead of just going, ah, well, that sucks. I'm not personally drilling for oil, so I'm good. I don't know. First of all, switch your energy supplier from a non-renewable energy source to a renewable energy source. And if you don't know, simply just taking contact to any energy supplier can help you figure out how to find out who's your energy supplier. Usually it takes about a phone call, a couple of emails to change your energy supplier. They will usually do all the like annoying things for you, like unsubscribing from your previous supplier, all that stuff. When I changed my energy supplier, it took literally five minutes and they took care of everything. It's amazing. And it's a really efficient way of making sure that your house is not using power that comes from fossil fuels. A little on the nose, but reduce consumption. Simply living more sustainably, consuming consciously, not over consuming, will also minimize the use of fossil fuels in your daily habits, in your daily life. Because everything requires production and transportation, etc. So if you only buy and use what you need, 
you're doing a great job. Then there's obviously also driving, flying, etc. Do that as little as you can. Take public transportation, go fly free, carpool with others. Generally be mindful and careful as to how you transport yourself around if you have the option of controlling that. This is important, but vote for politicians with green politics. Vote for people that want to place restrictions on the fossil fuel industry. It's definitely tough picking sometimes, but vote for the greenest policy you can find. Does it matter? Yes, it matters a lot. It matters a lot. In terms of political action, you can also sign pledges as well as call up your local representative, take contact to them and ask them to stop funding future projects related to fossil fuels and fossil fuel based infrastructure. Let them know that you think it's a bullshit idea. Also, you can support NGOs and organizations that help fight against the fossil fuel industry that keeps them accountable. Also, and I've talked about this before, I have a couple of videos about it, but change your bank. So many banks invest our money in fossil fuel projects, the majority of which, in fact. I have an entire impact video about the impact of banks that also talks about how to find banks that do not fund fossil fuel projects, and then you can support those banks instead. Actually, this has a really, really big impact. Also support local production, local food systems, and choose a plant-based diet, because yeah, animal agriculture and the fossil fuel industry. And also show up. Show up to protests that help fight against fossil fuels. Show up, support and raise the voices of indigenous people and minorities whose land is being exploited and used for pipeline coverage. Yeah, and I hope that was helpful. Anyway, this was the impact of fossil fuels and crude oil and what you can do to make a really, really important difference. Thank you so much for watching this video. If you liked it, leave me a comment down below. That would definitely make my day. And also subscribe to this girl's channel. That will also make my day and we could be friends. Okay, cool. Also, my book is coming out in a hot second, Sustainable Badass. The link is down below, so go ahead and check it out. Have an amazing day and take really good care of yourselves. Until next time, bye. Thank you so much for watching this video and also a special thank you to my Patreon supporters. You guys help me create green zero waste contents and I love you guys. You can find the links to my social media accounts down below and the link to my Patreon on this screen. Bye!